settled there is. You, you could go and live anywhere else in Israel, yet they choose to live there, and they still attack the Palestinians. It's, it's just madness, you know? Yeah, it really is. Now, on, on Popular Front, one of the articles, I know it was written by you, but by your team over there, the Boogaloo Cop yeah. Killers, what's the story with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you know, the, the Boogaloo movement, the kind of, I think they're mostly, it's very, it's not really a cohesive movement, but it's mm-hmm. like a decentralized um, ideology, I guess, the you know, anti-government, kind of right libertarian um, ideology, anti, very vehemently anti-cop. Um, and two of the, you know, self-proclaimed proclaimed Oogaloo boys, um, they actually killed two uh, law enforcement officers. So they went on like a kind of a, you know, like a little vigilante mission and they just shot up one of the guard posts and killed a police officer, killed another one. Um, yeah, man, and there was not a lot of information out there on it. And one of our guys, like uh, Ali Winston, great writer, investigative journalist, he looked into it and... You know, it was what it was. And then we did this article. Um, a lot of the Boogaloo saw it and went crazy. Like, no, no, this isn't right. And it's like, well, it is. <laughs> it, it is. It's not what you want it to be, but it is correct. You know what I mean? So, but um, I don't know. I think the Boogaloo are quite interesting. Like, some of them have, like, I think the liberal media has unfortunately labeled them all as, like, right wing, like, far right fascists or whatever. And it's like, they're, they're definitely not that. Like, there is an element of them that are. But because it is a, it's not a cohesive movement, it's more of an ideology, that doesn't mean that the other groups have let them in. It's just those groups have taken on that form. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. not like they're responsible for it. So, I don't know. I'm very interested in, like, decentralized ideologies and movements. And we saw a lot of them when the, the clashes were happening in the U.S. But I think the FBI and the CIA have very, very got a big, very close eye on them now after the, uh, the shootings. <laughs> Yeah, they were actually on their way to shoot some friends of mine in Las Vegas protesting. Uh, no way. Uh, yeah, 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 George Floyd, yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, they, 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 they must have been the, the far right ones, I guess, the fascist kind of ones. Yeah, I believe I they, had a, read about yeah, this. they had a whole plan yeah. to kidnap judges and stuff. And, you know, whole right, plan. right. Yeah. Now, yeah. Um, some of them are lunatics. Yeah, <laughs> they got them in every year, <laughs> all over the place. Yeah. Now, um, what's the story about now where you somehow hooked up with a guy who is a, a dark web drug dealer? Yeah, that was another one. It took me years to get the access to that. It was one of the last pieces I did for Vice. I really loved that article. Um, yeah, man, I, I basically, one of these big, it was before all the real big shutdowns came, you know, like Silk Road was big. Um, there was all these other big kind of deep web drug dealing websites. And one of the biggest sellers, I was just contacting him. And I, I noticed, I wanted to contact him because I noticed he was doing these kind of two for one deals. He was doing like holiday specials, you know, on drugs and heroin and stuff. And this was before, like, all the other groups were doing it. So I found him really interesting, and he had a whole team, and I got speaking to him. And over the years, I learned, I kind of got his trust. I proved, you know, I said to him, I proved that, you know, whatever you want, like, wherever I met him, I would meet him, I'd give him my phone, I'd let him take the, you know, put it in a barrier bag so there was no signal or anything. Whatever he wanted, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm down, let's do it. So we did that, and eventually he was like, okay, you know, you can come and you can come with me, and we, you can stay with me for a weekend, and you can write an article. So... We started off in um, Spain, and then we got a, uh, what did we do? Did we get a plane? No, we got a ferry, and then we went to, like, uh, Morocco. Um, we went into the mountains in Morocco. He had this huge grow house. Like, he had literally tons of weed bagged up all up to the ceiling. Um, just everything. It was crazy. So then we did that, and and then he took me to, like, his little kind of, had this weird, I don't know what you were calling it. It was like a, a luxury cabin, I guess, where he would, like, he showed me all the backside, the back end of it, where he's, you know, he's doing all the orders on the internet, he's bagging them up, he's sending them off. Like, it was incredible, really. Like, and he was making, I don't know, like 100 grand a week or something, which for some drug dealers might not be a lot, but for him, it, it was a lot, you know. He only had a small team, so it was very interesting, man. Now, what would motivate him to want to do an interview with you? Well, for him, I guess, ego. <laughs> to be honest like a lot of people are driven by ego I think um, which is fine to a degree but some of them lose their minds with it you know um, but yeah I guess also I guess for him if he sees in his head he sees like oh this is big article in Vice about his group he might think oh we're going to get you know more sales now I mean I'd probably think the opposite you know if it was I don't do drugs I'm, I'm not into any of that but if I did I, I certainly, certainly wouldn't want to like buy them from a guy that's been advertising Vice, <laughs> you know, essentially. But uh, I don't know. That was his thought. Now, now, how about him? Was he uh, a drug user? 
Well, yeah. I mean, the first day I met him, we were like, we went through the mountains actually, or like second day or something. We went through the mountains, and he's like, "Oh, do you want to um, do you want to lie?" And I was like, "I don't do drugs, man." He's like, "Oh, do you don't mind if I do?" I was like, "No, I, was like, I don't care. Like, I've been around loads of people doing drugs." And then he just like poured out like a line onto his phone and was like sniffing coke on the way up the mountain. It was just crazy. And then one time he was like taking oxycontin. And I was like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> like, this guy is a, he's a very heavy operator, you know? Very, I mean, he didn't seem like a drug addict or anything, but certainly he liked to have a good time, I guess. And that was a line of heroin or coke? Uh, coke, coke, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Now, mm-hmm. uh, how about this one here? In search of illegal arms traffickers in Afghanistan. Now, how'd you make contact with them? <laughs> <laughs> how are you finding these people with? Man, <laughs> I'm a weird guy, man. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the thing, the darkest sides of the world, like, interest me so much. But, yeah, yeah. that was um, Franz J. Marty wrote the article for uh, for Popular Front. Um, and, yeah, that was amazing, man. Like, he spent a lot of time in Afghanistan. And, you know, he's, he's like a, a white guy from, um, I think, from, I don't know, Belgium or somewhere like that. And I think they, he just ended up spending so much time in the, the, the kind of most brutal rural areas um, the people just kind of gained a respect for him and were like, okay, you know, like he's he's about it. We'll take him there and we'll show him this and whatever. So in Afghanistan, things are different as well. Like things change so rapidly there that the threat of detection or getting caught is it doesn't even matter. Like you know, they don't really care. Really, it's, they're the areas they operate in. It's like the police haven't been there for about ten years. You know what I mean? Gotcha, so, gotcha. Now we only got about four minutes left. <clears throat> Uh-huh. Now I know that uh, you, the other day you were saying you were looking for correspondents, for r- reporters, for yeah. writers. Uh, describe the, the kind of people you're looking for to work with you uh, on your projects here. Well, it's tricky, man. This is a good question. I mean, I want younger people as well because I think that like young people need their foot in the media. But then I also want people that are like from diverse backgrounds, and I don't just mean ethnically. That's not like a woke thing. I think that like any kind of a different background really helps with journalism, you know? Like, I don't, none of my family are journalists, you know, none of my family are rich or anything like that, you know? Grew up very, very um, humbly, you know? We didn't have any money, and it's like, I think that gives you a different, uh, kind of an edge in certain situations, and I want people from other backgrounds that have an edge from some other type of upbringing that I think will bring something good to popular front, you know? And also, like, people that are not too ideological, you know? Like, I don't want, I don't want to hire someone that's going to be like, I'm not going there because, you know, like, I don't know, whatever their political ideology is, it doesn't agree with them or whatever. Like, I think, you know, if you're a journalist, you cannot be an activist at the same time, I don't think. It's, mm. it's tricky, you know, especially if you're on the ground in a war zone, you can get yourself into trouble. So, yeah, I guess those are the kind of people we're looking for. Just different people, young, and people that want to work extremely hard, you know, like, I, I have no time for people that are lazy, you know. Now, would, you would fund their travels or would they have to be self supporting yeah, I would fund it. I would fund it. Like, that's the idea. Like, in the future, I hope next year I'm, I'm going to try and raise a little bit more money. We've got some plans to do that. And I want to just be able to say to someone, like, hey, uh, you know, we're going to send you away with one of our guys or women or whatever, like one of our producers and cameramen, camera women, and you go and make it. We'll pay you. We'll not pay you a lot. We won't pay you the same way that, like, you know, the TV will pay you because you don't have that money. But we will pay you, and, you know, and you will get, you know, it's, it's a good, good way for us to grow, and I think it's good for... We have respect in the in the kind of journalism community now, and I think that it will be good for for the reporters as well. Well, we got a lot of great young men and women who listen to this show that that I think fit that description. So hopefully, uh, we can send some people your way. Jake, yeah, man, definitely. Yeah, jakehanrahan.com, popularfront.co. The Patreon is called Popular Front, and then as well the the YouTube channel. And and how about your Twitter? What's your Twitter called? Jake Hanrahan, right? Uh, yeah, Jake underscore Hanrahan, H-A-N-R-A-H-A-N. That's any social media, that's my handle. Um, yeah. Jake, thank you so much. Uh, anytime you got something you want to promote, give me a call. We'll put you right on here, okay? Absolutely. Thank you, mate. Really appreciate it. I really enjoyed this. Thank you, mate. Good night. Speak soon. Bye-bye. And now a word from our sponsors. OppermanReport.com. Hey, do you like what you're hearing? 
Do you like the work that you see us doing here at Opperman Report? You can support that work by becoming a member at OppermanReport.com. And as you have access to over 200 exclusive shows and interviews that you can't find on YouTube or Spreaker or iHeart or iTunes or KYAH, you can't find them anywhere else online, exclusive to our member sections, to our members. Also, too, there's images, videos, documents, court docs. And don't forget, you can hear your ad played here on the Opera and Report, reach hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people on a daily basis because the show is repeated every day all over the world. Contact me at operandreport at gmail.com and I'll give you a good deal on advertising rates. Have you ever thought about opening your own mobile card or kiosk business? Maybe the facility you manage could establish new revenue by adding coffee, food, or retail services. Card King International can be the answer to your needs. Card King is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile coffee, food, and retail carts and kiosks. Card King has been working with clients and corporations across North America for 20 years, providing innovative designs, custom manufacturing, and timely delivery. Carts and kiosks are fun, and so are the dozens of designs on our website. Please visit us today at www.cart-king.com or just call us at 1-877-986-7771 and get your sales rolling. The Opperman Report is brought to you by Aquadam.net. You can give them a call at 707-764-2119. A flooded home is never easy to deal with. You're left with the mess to clean up, the insurance companies to deal with, and not to mention all the memories, the precious memories that are lost in the flood. You can never replace those. An aqua dam can be a tool in your arsenal to protect your home and property from the floodwaters. The coffer dam is filled with water to control water and is reusable as long as it's taken care of. It can protect your home or business from rising floodwaters like a dam, but without the beavers. It can also be used in construction. If you need an area to be dewatered, an aqua dam can do the job. An aqua dam was used at SeaWorld in Orlando for the Mako roller coaster ride during the coaster's construction by dewatering the work area. An aqua dam is now dewatering the work area at San Antonio SeaWorld for their newest roller coaster ride. An aqua dam has been used in many construction projects all around the U.S. and all around the world. Now give aqua dam a call, 707-764-2119. You can look them up online at aquadam.net. You can find them on Facebook at Aquadam Inc. You call them up, you email them, you tell them Ed Opperman sent you, and they're going to take 10% off the price. Aquadam.net, 707-764-2119. Are you ready to change your life but don't know how to start? Is your stress and worries keeping you awake at night? Have you been battling grief, anxiety, or depression all alone? Have you lost touch with your own sense of being or spirituality? Soul Free Therapies offers professional and affordable live video streaming counseling and coaching services from the comfort of your own home. Sessions offered in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Go to our website at www.soul-free.com and book your first session today. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers. I've dealt with thousands of law firms, and I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, seven days a week. Just log into kmdlaw.com. That's kmdlaw.com. Or you can call toll free 833-4-KMD-LAW. That's 833-4-KMD-LAW. Personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents. They handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be because the team at KMDLaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to KMDLaw.com or call toll-free 833-4KMDLaw. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMDLaw. PureSoapFlakes.com 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. 
they have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opera Room Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to sing a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call. 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flake Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. 